You can't see me. Shit. Oh well, I'll give you a quick update, even though you can't see me. Um, I've tried both my Rhino beams, and they're both flat. <sighs> yeah, it's been one of them days. Uh, I'm here at my new syndicate water. I loaded my barrel up. The tire was flat. So I got here about time to get here. I got here about quarter to three, and don't know what the time is now. Nine, half past nine, something like that, I suppose. Perhaps even a little bit earlier. It's a lovely little water. Um, seven and a half acres there's seven swims on it the four main ones are down this south bank over there in the corner there's a bay swim there's a bay swim over there so I'm just turning my food over there's a base swim over there, and then there's one on the headlands over there. Oh, so I've got my rods out. No, is that a fish? I keep getting single blips on that rod. I've had a cast around. Um, yeah, I've had a cast around, couldn't find anything, it's just more or less all silt. So, hello, there's a fish rolling out there, that's what I like to see. So I've put out about, I mean I'm only here for the night. But I've put out about 200 baits. I know that sounds a lot, but like I say, I can't find any features as such. I mean, there might be depressions in the silt where they have been feeding. So, I mean, I'll know more tomorrow when I go around for a bit of a marker up. It's getting too dark to do anything now, so I'll catch you tomorrow. Oh, good morning. Um, I did try to do some video last night, but it got too late. You couldn't see anything. Um, this is the first trip down to my new syndicate. In actual fact, it's a better place than what my last syndicate was. Uh, it's about 10 minutes from my daughter's house. It's about 10 minutes from work. And uh, if I drive from my house, it's about half an hour. I've got a supermarket less than 10 minutes away. I've got a McDonald's and KFC less than 10 minutes. I've got a Lidl's that's less than 5 minutes. So, all in all, it's more or less a perfect location for me. I mean in the winter it would take me many minutes just to 
pop down, pop a little bit of bait in, then all the around my daughters all go back home. So, yeah. Well, I had a bit, of, a bit of a cast around last night, just before I settled on where I'm putting the rods. And out in front of me, it appears to be all silt. Now, there might be some deviations in the silt where the fish have been feeding. There might not. But I chose not to use a marker float. I just had a lead around. Uh, wherever I've casted, there's a little bit of a donk. But then I'm only using two ounce and ounce leads. Uh, ounce and a half lead, sorry. So, I'm going to pull back. It's just smooth. So, with no real feature in front of me, with no real features to work to, I've just used my bait as a feature. I'm off home today. Don't know when. But it'll be after dinner. Oh, first brew of the day. Oh, I got bit last night. Me mozzies up and ran out. As it's my first trip down, I know absolutely, well, I'm not going to say I don't know absolutely nothing. Um, it's about seven and a half acres with seven swims on. Um, the average depth where I'm fishing is between six and seven foot, I would guess. There are a couple of deep holes. One goes down to 11 foot. And the other one goes down to 14 foot. Now, the owners of the lake have started feeding the lake with pellets. So, yes, I could have had a shortcut and fished the swim where they've, where they've been putting the pellet in, but if I do that, I will learn nothing at all about the lake. So... It might be an area worth concentrating on in the winter because I should say they'll stop feeding the fish September, October. And they'll still keep travelling there for a period of time looking for the pellet. So, like I say, it might be an area worth putting a little bit of bait in over the winter. Right, I'll sign off now and I'll catch you later. Well, time's, what is the time? About 20 past seven, half past seven. Ah, quarter to eight. And I've just missed my first take.
it came about five minutes. Yeah, about five, ten minutes after a coot had been in and picked me bait up. So I've just rebaited, put it back out there. On the helicopter well I'm gonna have to show you that again anyway because uh, on the last video when he showed you the rig everything was really backwards so I'm gonna have to show you that again um, tell you the truth I think the next time I come down it's going to be a change of tactics possibly I'll go back to me fluorocarbon mainline and running leads light leads this lake leads itself to that but I've stuck with the with the helicopter this trip so just to see how the rest of it pans out I've been seeing a few fish roll, but they're further to me right, and basically they're in the next swim's water. I mean, all right, there's nobody in there, so as I could put, a, I, I could put a bait there. But if somebody turns up, I'm going to have to wind it in anyway. So. I'm not going to bother with that. Hook's still sharp. So there's no point in changing that. Yeah, so that's it for now. Unless you get any more action, of course. which case obviously I'll let you know so goodbye for now oh, all right, start again as I'm about to rebate I'll just run you through my helicopter setup um, because in the last video everything was back to front hopefully this one's I've got it all sorted now first the mainline sinker with a bead uh, tapered mainline stops tapered mainline stoppers from Fox on top of that goes I don't know whether you can get these anymore but there'll be plenty more about pro logic last meter next comes 
your link swivel with your hook length. On the lead end, we've got, um, I can't remember what you call them, I've got some here, Chod Heli Buffer Swivels. I use these unless I'm using lead core or anything like that. Because when you're playing a fish, it's like that, and the tag protects your main line. Underneath that, is a heavy duty o-ring. Now that won't pull through there, through that buffer bead. <clears throat> but what it does help is attaching one of these. Can you no you can three pound C clip but you can get them in six pound if you want to go for a long chuck. Attached to that is your lead as you can see. Now that one's got the swivel cut off so as I could totally go straight down onto it. If If a fishing silt, which is what I'm doing today, um, I mean that between the lead and the buffer bead, I've got two foot, two foot six. Um, so there's plenty of room for that, for the bait to fly up. Pretty much as you do is when you're chod fishing. But I'm not a great believer in the chod. So even if that plugs into the silt like that, which it won't do, it will more likely plug in like that, there's still, the up length is right away so as it don't hinder presentation. Uh, that's how I normally fish it on gravel bars, hard spots, you know, sort of clay. Um, on the other two rods, I've still got the swivel attached, but the buffer bead only goes over the top end of the swivel. So there's still movement on the swivel, so as it can, if, if it plugs in like that, it's still going to be laying flat. Uh, There's the O-rings, Fox Heavy Duty. Um, I normally get them from uh, traditional tackle. I think they're six, they're either six mil or 6.5, I can't quite remember. So, do the same job. Plenty of meat on them. Uh, I'm using two ounce leads on two ounce lead on this one. Uh, I've got an ounce lead on the middle rod, and the two ounce on the outside right rod. So that's a little insight into the rig. If you use it, hope it works for you. If you don't, it's just another rig, isn't it? Right, I'll see you later. Right, back again. Um, not a lot to say really. I'm getting quite a, on the, the right hand rod, I'm getting quite a number of line bites. 
so I've dropped it a little bit shorter. See how that fares. And I suppose I was fishing at about 11 wraps. Yeah, about 11 wraps. And I've dropped it down to about 10. Lake is flat calm. Well, it's not flat calm, there's a gentle breeze on it, and it is a gentle breeze as well. Seeing a couple of fish roll. But not in front of me. They've been most of the actions have been to the right. Well, I've seen some out there to the left. Should I have dropped into where they've been putting the pellet in? Yeah, could have done, but I'm not that desperate for a fish. I mean, there's seven swims on it. <coughs> so I've got to get to know each swim. If the fish are in it, obviously. But there's a fish. Is it a fish or is it damn poo? It's hard to say at the moment. Could be a coot with an aqua lump. No, that one looked like a fish. I mean, there's quite a bit of bird life on here and they're often diving. So when you see a, an indication, you've got to stare at it for quite a while to see if, the, see if it is a bird or whether it was a fish. I mean, over, just over there, where I've been fishing, there's what, five coots? One, two, three, four. One's just dived five. Another one six. Yeah, so there's six coots hanging about me baited area to the right. And that's where they seem to be holding, they don't. There's one right across the far side, but I'm not right across the far side. So We'll see.